I'm curious with Project Voice, what is one of the breakthrough moments that you've had and what is the future of the organization? Um, so many uh, breakthrough moments with Project Voice. Uh, probably the one that I, that I mentioned the most is years and years and years ago, um, was invited to a private Catholic middle school in Southern California. And we were nervous because the school was like pretty conservative and nobody in the school had ever heard of or seen spoken word poetry before except the one teacher that had invited us. Um, and so we did the show, but everything went fine. And afterwards, everyone was really excited and, and came and said how much they liked it, enough that we were invited back the next year, which was great. And oftentimes, when I'm doing work with Project Voice, specifically in a school setting, I will take a moment during the show to ask whether there's anyone in the audience that has a poem that they would like to come up and share. Because we never know when there might already be a young poet in the audience who's been waiting for an opportunity like this. And the first time we were at the school, nobody volunteered, which made sense since, like I said, no one had ever heard of this art form before. But the second year when we came back, um, during the show, I said, is there anyone here that has a poem that they want to come up and share? And as soon as I asked the question, there was a little boy in the third row who like jumped up and leapt onto the stage. Uh, <laughs> did not wait for me to call on him. Did not raise his hand. And when he got on stage, he was out of breath. He was, he was like breathing really hard. And I said, hi, what's your name? And he said, I wrote this poem the day after you left last year, and I've been waiting all year to share it with you. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I like, couldn't breathe. I was so overwhelmed. Um, so that's, that's a moment that I carry with me for forever. And in terms of the future of the organization, so we're currently a team of five poet educators. Um, and we are all pretty much on tour going from school to school to school. Sometimes we're in teams of two. Sometimes we're one on one. Um, it depends on you know where we're going and the, the size of the program. But I like that size. I think it would be great to be to have maybe a couple more members of the team at one point when we're like able to handle that. Um, but I, I like I would love it if every classroom that wants poetry in it could have poetry in it. Um, that would be a dream of mine. Right now, we get more requests than we can get to, which is a good problem to have. Um, so I would love to expand the team when the time is right and everything works um, so that we can, we can get poetry into even more spaces. So speaking of poetry in classrooms, what would you say to a hypothetical person who really wants, really loves spoken word poetry, but just has this idea that there has to, they need to learn it. And they're always Googling how to write spoken word poetry because they just feel like there's some sort of uh, maybe, you know, elements to follow. And there's not a lot of educational information that this person has found about <laughs> how to really, like, what is it, you know, what, when they're looking for something. And so what would you suggest? What would you say? Well, I think, um, you know, if you wanted to be a novelist, you would need to read a lot of novels. And if you wanted to be a filmmaker, you would need to watch a lot of movies. And if you were going to be you know, a musician, you should listen to some music. I think similarly, the nice thing now is that spoken word poetry, there's so much available online. And if you live here in New York, there's so much available not online uh, in IRL. And, uh, and I, I think that the, the best suggestion I have is just to keep watching it and keep reading as well. I mean, spoken word poetry is specifically the art with performance, but it also relies on, on poetic writing. So read more and watch as much as possible. The reason that I was able to do anything in terms of poetry is because I found a community that hosted a poetry open mic and I would go every week and I would watch and I would watch and I would watch and there were months of time that I performed nothing and just watched and I had all of these different styles and techniques in front of me that I soaked up like a sponge. It's almost like old school apprenticeship learning, um, which you can now do, you can now replicate with YouTube. You can see like, okay, this is something that this poet does that I like, that I could try. I don't like that. I would do it differently. This would work for me. The, all of those pieces are things you learn only by seeing all of the options that are out there. Um, what I would say 
is a, is a trap that most people fall into is they find one poet that they really like and watch everything that one poet has ever done, but then they suspiciously start to sound a lot like that one poet, um, which is okay, that happens too, but then I would say expand who you're watching and who you're reading, um, and that's the fastest way to just learn kind of the vocabulary of the art form and what tools you have at your disposal to use. Do you find that you gravitate towards certain topics or is it usually around your life experiences and in those moments? Uh, I tell people, which is true, that the reason that I write poetry is to figure things out. Poetry is really like a puzzle solving strategy for my brain. So whenever there's something that I don't understand or I'm having a hard time working my way through, um, that's when I sit down to write a poem about it. And, and I really think of poem as a verb, so I like poem my way through it. And sometimes I get to the end of the poem and I look back and I go like, oh, that's what this is about, got it. Or I get to the end of it and I have not figured anything out, but at least I have a new poem out of the situation. Um, so the common denominator, I think, across the board is when it's something that I can't figure out any other way. Um, that's usually what leads me to poetry. 